So investing can be as difficult as you want it to be or as complicated and you can pick and, and create these cool little uh, strategies for yourself or you can keep it simple. Hey everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance and welcome to the Clever Girl Finance platform. So in today's video, I have a very special guest joining me. Her name is Julie Alma Taveras and Julie is the founder of Investing Latina and she's going to be joining me to talk about how she got started with investing and how she's currently investing her money. She's also featured in my upcoming book that launches on October 20th of 2020 called Clever Girl Finance, Learn How Investing Works, Grow Your Money. So I'm really excited to have Julie on here to have this conversation with me. Hi, Bola. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to chat again. I feel like we recorded this almost years ago, it feels like, you know, because of this whole situation that we're in and 2020 yeah. has been like 10 years worth of, of stuff happening. Uh, but I'm so happy to be on. Thanks for, for having me. Yes, I'm excited to have you on and to share your amazingness with the Clever Wealth Finance audience. So I'd love for you to tell everyone who you are, what you do, what is Investing Latina? Yes. So my name is Julia Tavares, and I am the founder of Investing Latina, which is an online platform for financially powerful women. And I started Investing Latina really because I saw this sort of gap when it came to investing knowledge specifically for the Latin community. Uh, the statistics say that only about 4% of the people that are invested in the stock market are Latino. And that to me is mind blowing. And it's like, okay, no, we gotta do something about this. And that's really how I, how I really decided to start it and, and to start to really share more knowledge, just my experience on what I've done because I've been investing for a long time. If you listen to the podcast, you know that I started when I was 19. I had no idea what I was doing, but then I kept going and throughout the years I kept learning. So I'm really just happy to be sharing this information and, and to be connecting with people like you that do so much for the community. Like, hello, during like COVID, you gave everybody free access to your workshops. Like seriously, it's amazing. So I, I applaud you for that. And I thank you for all that you do. This book is like, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to come out. <laughs> well, it comes out on October 20th and you're in it. So that's awesome. <laughs> I know, I'm excited for that. That's awesome. So I'd love for you to tell everybody from a personal perspective, you know, what you do is incredible. The work you do is so necessary, but why is investing important to you personally? Yes. So for me, um, investing uh, like I mentioned, I didn't really know what I was doing when I started. I just knew that it, it seemed like a good idea and, and they were giving a match at my company. So I'm like, all right, I, I don't, there's not much that I can lose when there's free money involved. <laughs> and um, that really developed this habit in me. I just, it was, I started off small, $50 a month. And then next thing I knew when I took on a new job, it was automatic. I was like, oh yeah, I have to invest. Like, you know, my, my account has been growing and I want to keep it that way. Uh, so I kind of just kept doing it and it became just a habit. And the reason why it's so important is uh, a lot to do with the fact that we as individuals definitely want to have security, right? We want to have a sense of things are going to be okay, even amidst like crazy things that happen, even like this pandemic, we need to have something that can really anchor us down in terms of being able to feel confident that in the future, no matter what struggles we go through, no matter what happens in the world, because inevitably crazy things happen, um, we can still kind of depend on something to take care of us when we could no longer you know, work or, or have bring in this income like we do when we're working in our working years. So that's really why retirement investing is so important to me because I want to be sure that in the long term when I'm ready to like not be working and I no longer have like the energy to be out and about, I can still have money coming in. And that's the point of an investment account. You know, I know that it can seem a little scary and, and you know, we don't know exactly what to start with when we start. But at the end of the day, that really is something that you learn. And as long as you have that ultimate goal of, I want to have in investments and I want to be able to have income from those investments, 
you kind of figure out how to how to make that happen. That's so key. And I love that you talked about, even though you didn't know where to start, you figured it out. And one of the things that we've talked about in the past is that your first introduction to investing was with your 401k from your employer, right? I'd love for you to tell me about that. And just looking back at that decision, how do you feel the decision to invest, even though you didn't really know, right? To invest and then to figure out what it meant and learn how it worked. How do you feel about that now looking back? Yeah. I mean, looking back at it, I'm like, wow, I've made a lot of dumb moves in my youth. And that was actually a smart thing that I did. You know, like it was one of the things, could you imagine I was 19 years old? Like we were out partying, we were out spending, just thinking that, you know, it was only the beginning, which it is. It's only the beginning of life at that age, uh, adult life, you know, making your own decisions and, and choosing how you, how you want to live your, your own life. Uh, but that was the one smart decision that I made. I'm like, wow, I am so happy. That's something so small. And this is why like small financial wins is something that I talk about. And I mention online on Instagram and on YouTube, because there's so much power in that. There's just, you're just one small decision away from the rest of your life, from creating something amazing. And I think that that's what it was for me. And like that, you, you don't know, like you, when you start something new, you really don't know what all the options are. Okay, what are stocks? What are bonds? What are commodities? It's a whole big world. But the good thing about it is that you can kind of simplify it. So investing can be as difficult as you want it to be or as complicated and you can pick and, and create these cool little uh, strategies for yourself or you can keep it simple. And the beauty with uh, 401ks and 403bs is that they do just that. Listen, like they're not going to sit there and be like, oh yeah, let's pick Tesla. Let's pick Amazon. No, they're like, listen, target date fund. You'll be good. Pick when you plan on retiring <laughs> and that's all you need to know. And that, you know, those are options. So people that are out there just kind of thinking about, you know, I don't know where to start. A target date fund is an easy way to start. Uh, it's something that you just decide, okay, I'm going to be 60 in, in 2055. And that's when I want to retire or start uh, taking distributions from the account or taking money out of the account. And based on that, the fund is created so that it is, uh, the risk is managed by that time frame. So since we have quite a few years before then, we have two and a half decades before then, you'll have an aggressive type of, type of portfolio. But again, these are things that you don't have to necessarily find the nitty gritty on. It's just a way for you to enter into the market, enter into uh, investments. And then as you learn a little bit more, you can really adjust and pick things that you like. And then you can start picking stocks and you know buying and holding them. So, so there's a huge range when it comes to that little word, investing. Uh, but there's always uh, the beginning and there's always the very complex. So there's, there's levels to it and finding your comfort level is probably the key. That's so good. And like you said, you know, for a beginner investor, someone who's just getting started, like simplification is the best. And if that's what your employer's plan is offering you, then why not? And if there's free money associated, and that's a 100% return on your investment immediately, almost depending on what the match is, right. And so, you know, I definitely agree with you in terms of a 401k. And while it can be limited with investment options, when you do leave that job, because most people do not stay at jobs their entire careers anymore, when you do leave that job, you can roll over that investment portfolio into a brokerage account that gives you access to the entire stock market to so all the index funds and ETFs and individual stocks. And by that time, right, if you're focused on learning how investing works, you would have started to understand what each means, expense ratios, researching, and all that kind of stuff. So that's some really, really great advice. So now that you're several years away from, you know, that very first investment as a 19-year-old, and you have evolved as an investor, and now you have some really specific long-term goals, what are some of the things that you are investing for? Yes. So what I love to always focus on and leave it kind of as the first step, you know, when you are thinking about how you budget and where your money is going, the long term is the best first place to start because there is no huge pressure on what you need to do with that money uh, and you have time. 
So my first step is always investing for retirement. So at the beginning of the month, the money goes in there. At the middle of the month, the money goes in there. Easy, right? So that's one part of my portfolio, you know, my investment portfolio and my, my money management. And then another part of it is real estate. Like that's something that I love. And we talked a little bit about this on the podcast. Yeah. So if y'all haven't heard that episode, check it out. It's really good. <laughs> for anyone who wants to go check it out. So that investing into real estate is kind of the second part. And there are many different ways to do it. So uh, another part is investing into a business. So for me right now, those are the three anchors of my portfolio, making sure that the easy stuff is taken care of, investing for retirement. You don't have to think much about it. Then real estate, which you do have to really think a little bit more through because uh, for me, for example, it's, it involves investing here in the U.S. and also back home in the Dominican Republic so that you have to be much more strategic with those things and it requires more thought and more strategy. And then with a business, the sky's the limit. You can do, you know, anything you want with, with the money that you invest into a business, but you also have to be very strategic and very mindful. You know, you want to make sure that you're, you'll get a return on investment. So, when it comes to the stock market and real estate, there are averages on what you can make, right? So the average in the market is, you know, seven, eight percent, let's say. Um, some years it's way higher and some years it's lower than that because that's the nature of, of the stock market. And then in real estate, there are also ranges, you know, you can make maybe 10 percent. Then when it comes to business, you can make whatever you want. It's unlimited. Depending on how much you invest into your business, that's how much will you, the return will be. You know, that's how much you can make out of it. It's, it's really going to depend on, on what you put into it. So I think when it comes to investing in general, it's up to you. You know, you decide what your, what your plan is. And a lot of times you can work backwards. So if you use a, a calculator and say, hey, I want to have a million dollars in uh, 20 years. How much do I have to put in per month to achieve that? And that's a great way for you to kind of think about wh what's my goal and, and what can I do now with what I have now to build this amazing investment portfolio or retirement nest egg. That is so awesome. And I love that you are diversified across different spaces, the stock market, real estate, business, then you're also diversified within each individual space. And that is just a really great way to structure your investment strategy, to set up your portfolio so that you can retain as much value of your assets over time and grow them regardless of what swings are happening, right? So if business isn't doing so well, well, you have your real estate, you have your stock investments. If those two aren't doing well, you have your business and, you know, kind of like that. And I love that approach to having broad diversification. I feel like, you know, individual stocks are hot and they're trendy, but yeah. You have to have another buffer in the background that's fully diversified. Otherwise, it's that age old adage of you putting all of your eggs in one basket. And it doesn't matter how incredible the company is. That is extremely risky to have all your money in the one single investment rate. Right. Um, so that's, I love your approach to investing and you've given so many nuggets here and there for anyone who's watching. I hope you had your notebooks out because these are all great tips that Julie just shared. Um, so before I let you go, Julie, I'd love for you to tell me what is your Clever Girl superpower? <laughs> My Clever Girl superpower is taking action. So I mentioned I didn't really know how to get into the market and how to do things and what in all the terms that are involved in investing, but taking that first step, taking action, getting started, then reading a lot, you know, listening to podcasts, hearing other people's experiences, all of that involves taking action. So if you can take action today, if you can start small and then work your way up to a million dollar portfolio, it's it's all you all you have to do i love that and you have an incredible platform online investing latina where you are helping latinas and other women um learn how investing works you do workshops you have all kinds of things going on so i'd love for you to share with people what you have going on and where they can find you Yes, absolutely. My goal is to help women succeed. And you and I are friends because of this, because we are motivated to really help others. And it's so important to me to just provide information and, and provide inspiration. And that's what I do. A lot of times I spend my time creating 
funny memes to capture the attention of people that might not typically look about, look into investing, you know, but that for me is a way to, to reach people. So I do that right on investing Latina on Instagram. And I also have content that I produce on YouTube. So you can check that out as well. You can also visit me right on my website, investinglatina.com, where you'll find like fun resources and, and ways that you can really build this your, yourself up to financial power. So I'd love to see you all there. And I'm so excited for this book and thank you for having me on it. Like, uh, it, it's going to be an honor to be printed in, in your book and to, to help women all over the world, because this is what you do all over the world, uh, help women all over the world. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So send me my copy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And your interview in the book is very inspiring. And you're an open book. You talk about the mistakes that you make, you know, mm -hmm. as you built your investment portfolio. So I definitely encourage anyone and everyone who's watching to check out the book. It's called Clever Girl Finance. Learn how investing works, grow your money. And I'm honored to have you as part of, you know, the book as well. So thank you so much. This has been so great. <laughs> and as always, thank you for sharing your knowledge and for coming back on the Clever Finance platform. Yes, thank you. And I hope to see you soon in person after the craziness dies down a little bit and, and things get a little bit better. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. You know, let's, let's finish out 2020 strong. Let's keep learning about investing. Let's put our money where it can work for us so we don't have to work as hard for it and become successful. <laughs>